the amount of people that have held Bitcoin for at least one year is at an all time high. This is a long term Bitcoin chart starting in 2010. On the right axis, we've got the Bitcoin price on a logarithmic scale. So each step over here is a 10x. And on the left hand, we see the fraction of people in percent that have held Bitcoin for at least one year. So the left axis over here refers to this orange line. The right axis over here refers to the price line in dark blue. Now, why is it so interesting that this orange line here is at an all time high that currently two thirds of all of Bitcoin has not moved for at least a year? It's interesting because it shows how liquid supply is somewhat contracting, right? When this tends to be high, for example, here in 2016, there wasn't a lot of Bitcoin going around. So when then people dollar cost average, right, when they continue to buy in or when there's maybe some kind of positive news coming out, that has a dramatic impact on price. So see how these rallies over here, they were preceded by heightened levels of this one year hodl wave. You can also see this here in 2012, right? A very high value compared to the past of Bitcoin that hasn't moved yet and see how then the price here at more than 10 X afterwards. We also see the exact same thing here in September of 2020, 63% of all of Bitcoin had moved for one year. And this was when Bitcoin was at 10K. And we all know Bitcoin then moved to almost 70K afterwards. So this is very encouraging that we see again a very high value over here, the highest indeed ever. This would thus imply that in case there is some kind of a positive catalyst, whatever this might be, maybe a slight change in tone by the Fed, maybe some kind of other positive news, let's say an approval of a Bitcoin ETF, even though not likely, whatever it might be, any positive news is likely going to not just be shaken off by the market, but because there is so little liquid supply of Bitcoin, any purchases will move the price massively. The thinner the order books, the smaller the liquidity pools, the more the price moves with every single purchase. Now I know that this video won't be watched by many. And the reason is attention on crypto is currently very, very low. This here is the number of confirmed transactions per day on Bitcoin. And when we are here at very high levels, so let's say in December of 2017, that's the exact point in time where we also see high prices. So when there's a lot of activity, when there's a lot of attention, when there's many eyeballs on Bitcoin, that's when the prices are elevated. And that's when crypto videos on YouTube get watched and prices aren't always rising. Then nobody really cares. Nobody researches crypto. But that's the exact point in time where you should be buying, where you should be looking at making those outsized returns. You're not going to make a lot of money by just following the crowd. You have to be buying before the crowd knows that it's a good investment. So you have to be buying when attention is low. You can see this several times here. Let's look, for example, at the May of 2019. May 2019, that was over here. Again, prices tended to be elevated, at least compared to what we have seen before, right? This was a rally of 160% from the bottom. It didn't yet peak here, probably because some large whale wallets bought here. So it wasn't the number of transactions, but it was simply just larger transactions that came here on board. We also saw that afterwards we saw the drop again below this level. So a lot of attention, a lot of trading volume is dangerous. And the exact opposite is true for the lows, right? We don't necessarily perfectly time the price lows with those activity charts, but still it gives us a rough hint that at least we are not in any kind of bubble territory. Let's look at July of 20. 21. That's when we saw a low in the transactions. July of 2021 is over here. We also saw a low in price. Now, not an absolute low, right? We see the transactions, they somewhat picked up again. The price rather dropped. But I think the explanation here is pretty similar to why we saw this rise over here after the activity peak. This is likely, again, whales selling. A lot of on-chain metrics, they don't indicate that excitement was actually the highest here in November of 2021, even though the price 
was the highest, right? This was the all-time high. We actually see way more activity in Q1 of 2021. So more transactions, more network congestion, more Twitter posts, more YouTube video views. All of this happened here. But we can also see that this second rally seems to have been caused by something else, not just by retail, not just by attention. And I think this was institutional buying, maybe triggered by Elon Musk putting Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Then Elon Musk reduced the support for Bitcoin. And that's probably also where now the institutions are giving up. So we had this temporary visit of larger whale holders that entered that are now exiting again. And that's probably explaining the divergence. Now, there are a lot of other models, right, that show that we are historically relatively low. So moving averages, for example, the two-year moving average, whenever we are below that, tend to be in a good accumulation zone. We are currently in such an accumulation zone. When we look at the 200-week moving average, it tends to be a relatively good support. We are somewhat below that now. But let's see how much further we can fall below. When we look at logarithmic regressions, such as the Bitcoin rainbow chart, we also see we are are now in historically low territory. This used to be a pretty good proxy of whenever we are low. And there are kinds of different models. This is a combination of different models. It tells us again, we are historically quite low. Doesn't mean we can't fall further, right? Some say we might fall to like 16K or so. But still, many, many metrics now point towards a pretty good risk to reward for Bitcoin. And given that attention is now so low, this tends to be a very good sign. Now we can also look at the market value to realized value. This is the Z-score. So it also takes the standard deviation of the market cap into account how risky or how volatile is currently Bitcoin. But in general, if the price is below the realized value, meaning the average Bitcoin holder is underwater, is in losses, that's usually when times turn around. And we are now again in that territory. So let's look at this. This was the end of the 2018 crash. This was the Corona crash and this is our current situation. Many, many models point towards bullishness here and I personally cannot predict the future either, but I simply look at this and think, does it make sense to sell Bitcoin now? And a lot of people that got burned with this recent crash, they probably look at all of this and they say, okay, I got caught up in the hype and I bought at the wrong time, but at least now it doesn't make sense to sell. Bitcoin still tends to trend upwards over time. So that's probably the reason why this one year hodl wave is all time highs, right? The people that got burned, they are not selling. And the people that timed this correctly and that sold properly, they now look at this and also see this as a buying opportunity. The question really is where will now additional selling pressure come from? I don't think it will come from institutions. They seem to have already sold. I don't think it will come from retail. They see the models. They see that we are historically low. So over the next two, three, four, five years, I'd rather bet on the price rising than falling. That's what I do. I continue to dollar cost average in and I simply have long enough of a time horizon. I can wait multiple years until I actually get a positive ROI. If you have been burned over here, right? And if you have experienced this 70% loss, but you still believe in Bitcoin long-term because you've done your research. In that case, I would also dollar cost average in because then you will get your break even earlier, right? Because your average purchasing price will be lowered each time you buy at these lower levels. So I'm actually now at a point, I did sell some Bitcoin over here in April of 2021, but I then continued dollar cost average in with all of these DCAs that I've made after my sale here, right? I think I started in like January or so of this year. With all of those DCAs, I would already be break even once we cross 30K. And that's not necessarily because I'm such a great market timer. It's simply because I continue to stay strong when everybody else is giving up or simply shifting the attention. And now how likely is it that we go up to 30K from here? I don't think it's entirely impossible. And if you go further down, that's fine with me as well. Then I simply just DCA in further and then wait for a reversal. At some point, there will be a reversal. And I don't even think that I'm alone with that. A lot of people are bearish as in where Bitcoin will go in the short term, right? Are we going to see 15K or 25K next? This is 700 votes roughly. Most people are actually bearish. But once you extend the time horizon and ask them, are we going to see an all-time high? So 
a Bitcoin above 70k in the next five years? Most people will say yes. The vast majority, 85%. Now, what does this mean? Let's say we go to 70k, right, the minimum, and we are currently at say 19.5k. That's a 3.6x. Now, let's look at how much return this is annualized. 29%. Now, what kind of investment can you get into right now that's likely going to return 29% per annum in the next five years? Property, probably not. Property is still at elevated prices. Stocks, who knows? Stocks long term tend to just return something around 10% per annum. Where can you get three times that with a comparatively risk off investment, right? This is not a random altcoin that's super centralized and that has the risk of regulatory impact. This is Bitcoin that has been blessed by the SEC as well. If you're just looking at the universe of investable assets, the vast majority is actually agreeing that Bitcoin is a pretty good bet. People simply don't tend to zoom out. They simply just look at the short term and they're worrying too much about the short term. But who cares if you're going to see 15K next or 25K next? What really matters is where you allocate capital over the years. And if everybody accepts, if everybody expects an all-time high in the next five years, then this might actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. People that are in losses don't sell and people that have money to allocate, they simply buy and wait for the long term to play out. If you're looking to make even more than 30% per annum, for example, by doing interest rate arbitrage, by doing a bit more advanced strategies, feel free to check out the premium membership. The link is in the video description. It's currently 75 US per month. If you sign up yearly, you do get two months for free. There's more information in this video over here. Hope to see you there and thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.